Welcome back to Logic Made Accessible. Last time we went over what logic is and why it's worth studying. This time we're starting our exploration of the three fundamental building blocks of logic. Once you learn these, you'll be making bulletproof arguments in no time. We will begin our study of logic by defining three basic notions used to characterize declarative sentences, their parts, and their relations between them. These are terms, propositions, and syllogisms. You will nuance and refine each of these further in future modules. For now, we look at terms. Forms of speech are either simple or composite. Examples of the latter are such expressions as the man runs, the man wins. Of the former, man, ox, runs, wins. Here are some examples of terms. Man, ox, runs, wins, yellow, that funny comedian, that book on the shelf, etc. Grammatically, terms fall into three classes, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. Man and ox are nouns. Runs and wins are forms of the verbs to run and to win. Yellow and funny are adjectives. Combinations of terms are used in order to predicate something of a subject. For example, when you say the man runs, you predicate runs of the man. We say that the man is the subject and runs is the predicate. When you say the man is funny, you predicate funny of the man. When you predicate something of a subject, you form a proposition. The proposition is either true or false. For example, the ox runs is either true or false. But can a term by itself be true or false? Let's see what Aristotle has to say. No one of these terms in and of itself involves an affirmation. It is by the combination of such terms that positive or negative statements arise. For every assertion must, as is admitted, be either true or false, whereas expressions which are not in any way composite, such as man, white, runs, wins, cannot be either true or false. Here, Aristotle argues that while assertions must be either true or false, terms are neither. For instance, take the assertion Africa is large. This is an assertion which is either true or false. On the other hand, let's take this term Africa. The term Africa cannot be either true or false. It is simply a word that refers to a thing. It refers to a continent south of Europe and southwest of Asia. It is not saying whether or not such a continent exists or whether or not such a continent is anything. Africa is simply a term. Later, we'll look at the copula. The copula is the word that relates the predicate and the subject. It generally takes the form of is, are, was, or were. It is not considered a term. For instance, in the assertion, all men are mortal, all men and mortal are terms, while are is the copula, so it is not a term. A helpful distinction can be made between two types of terms. First is categorigmatic terms. These are terms that refer to a category of things in the world, terms that have a determinate meaning without surrounding terms, as in a proposition. Second are syncategorigmatic terms. These are terms that do not refer to a category of things in the world. These are terms that require surrounding terms in a proposition for a determinate meaning to exist. For example, terms like dog, humans, happiness, Aristotle, that computer, or the gentleman running to catch the bus are all categorigmatic terms. On the other hand, terms such as and, or, every of, and on, as they stand by themselves, are syncategorigmatic. There's an intuitive difference between the two types just by giving examples, but the technical difference can be described in terms of categories. A category is roughly a collection of things that all have some sort of relevant common property. For instance, all of the particular chairs in existence are members of the category chairs. All of these chairs have a relevant common property. They are all chairs. This is why chairs is a categorigmatic term. It refers to the category of objects that are the thing. Here's a diagram to visualize the category states. The largest circle represents the category states, where anything inside the circle is a member of the category states. Although there is not enough room to have smaller circles for all of the states, a perfect diagram would have all the states in existence inside the category states. Finally, it is worth noting that some categories, unlike chairs or states, have only one member. For instance, the category Aristotle has only one member, Aristotle himself. Since Aristotle is the only thing that is Aristotle, he is the only member of the category Aristotle. The same holds for the category that chair or the category the United States of America. For Aristotle, there are many categories in the world, and we use terms to refer to them. Now that we can clearly say that categorigmatic terms are those that refer to categories. On the other hand, syncategorigmatic terms do not refer to categories. There's no category of, on, or an. This distinction is extremely important as categorigmatic terms will be emphasized in logic. It is also important to note that some terms seem to be composed of many terms. Take, for instance, the categorigmatic term, the ugly computer on top of the table. This is a categorigmatic term since it designates a category of things in the world namely a category which has only one member, 
the actual ugly computer on top of the table. However, it also contains the terms the, ugly, computer, etc. For the sake of this course, you will only need to deal with tasks relating to the larger term rather than the more complicated task of dealing with smaller terms within the larger term. From here on out, when we refer to terms, we are referring to categorigmatic terms as they are of the highest importance in logic. We must remember that a term remains a term as long as it can neither be true nor false. This is the case regardless of how long a term may be. The term ant is just as much of a term as the term the ant which walked along the ground in a quick fashion. Neither of these terms are making an assertion. We have already seen why this is the case for ant. However, it might be more tempting to think that the ant which walked along the ground in a quick fashion is making a claim. It seems that we are saying that there is an ant that walked along the ground quickly. On the contrary, we are actually saying only what it means to be in the category the ant which walked along the ground in a quick fashion. Namely, in order to be a member of this category, an object must be a particular ant that walked along the ground in a quick fashion. We are not stating anything about this ant, not even that this ant exists. It is in this sense that we are not predicating anything of it. It might be helpful to compare the ant which walked along the ground in a quick fashion with the following proposition. The ant which walked along the ground in a quick fashion is over there. Let us take the term larger. At first glance, this does not seem like it would be a term at all. Rather, it seems to be a word which only relates terms to each other, such as the dog is larger than the cat. Without the terms dog and cat, it seems that larger has no meaning. However, philosophers do consider words like larger as terms. They are a special kind of term known as a relational term, which you will learn about later. Note that this type of term, however, is not categorigmatic. Expressions which are in no way composite signify substance, quality, quantity, relation, place, time, position, state, action, or affection. Double, half, greater fall under the category of relation. The three fundamental building blocks of Aristotelian logic are terms, propositions, and syllogisms. Each of these has its own function and specific set of properties. In this lesson, we have looked at terms. Terms are the most basic building blocks of logic. In order to think and argue logically, we must fully understand and master the use of terms. In this lesson, we discussed how terms cannot be true or false. Being able to assign truth or falsity to a form of speech is an easy way to show that it is not a term. Additionally, we discussed that the copula is not considered to be a term. Finally, we made a distinction between categorigmatic and syncategorigmatic terms, and we made this distinction on the basis of understanding what a category is. In the following lessons, we will take a closer look at propositions and syllogisms, the other of the three building blocks. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.